Does anybody want to talk about Etsy Summers with me? Because I'm looking, I'm looking for my tribe, and I think that you're going to have to be it. So um, I started reading Essie Summers around the same time that I started reading Betty Neal's. And over the last decade, I think I, think I would consider myself um, a Betty Neal's expert, but I don't quite consider myself an Essie Summers expert. And I thought this would be a wonderful time to read through every book of hers that I can get my hands on and report my findings and, and tell you um, about my thoughts on who I consider to be a really fantastic, fantastic author. Mid-century um, harlequin retroness awesomeness. Um, she was born in 1912 and um, died the year I was married, 1998. And um, it looks like she was 45 when she first was able to be published by Mills and Boone. Um, she was published in 1957, and her very last book uh, was published in uh, 1997. Uh, she has 60, 56 novels, um, and then I think another book or two um, as well. And they are... They are not all universally wonderful, but they are interesting and thoughtful, and I like the sort of woman that I can tell is behind them. Um, her books sold 19 million copies, and that is not nothing. It's, it's a very, very, very impressive feat, and, um, you know, fist bump Sister Summers. Um, an array of occupations are found uh, within her novels. She is not a one-trick pony. Um, they, the heroes are often uh, drapers, which is a word I didn't know, I think, before I started reading her. And that's sort of somebody who owns and runs a department store. Um, writers, reverends, headmasters, sheep ranchers. Um, there's even an orchardist. Um, there are there are men of every stripe in here, and I and I kind of love that. But they're none of them afraid of hard work and afraid of um, being strong but tender. Anyway, uh, some of the the big themes of her novels tend to be I'm going to call this one the misunderstanding, and that should be in all caps with like neon outside it, maybe some exclamation points. Uh, when I first started reading Essie Summers, I was like, really not sure. I'm like, the entire book hangs on the fact that she didn't get a letter for 15 years. So postage kept them apart. I mean, it was very, very difficult for me to put the right amount of weight on this trope. But once I did, once I sort of found what she was doing and, and what, um, you know, sort of to work with the tools that she was handing me. The, the story along the way was so wonderful that I sort of, you know, some of them are still a little eye rolly and some of them are just like transcendent and beautiful and I love them. Um, it's a little bit gothic sometimes. Um, they're often mistaken identities, mistaken names. In one of them, um, I think three different um, children of a particular family branch all have the same last name, if you know French, and if you know Old Latin or something like that, you know. Um, another thing that I think her books are really well known for are strong, capable women. They are women who often, um, they're often being dealt um, crummy hands, but not always, um, but they're always like, wanting to be the drivers of their future and the and the pilots of their own life. And I like that. I like that, um, you know, they don't all have to be cartoonishly um, weak and they don't have to be cartoonishly like hard-charging CEO types. These are really ordinary people who are, are really strong and, um, and fighting some, fighting some personal battles maybe, but they're very capable. Um, another thing that I really like about her books is that it kind of tickles my middle brow heart. <laughs> I like 
I like all things middle brow. I do. I cop to that. And I like her literary references are are interesting. They're not ones that I've maybe heard of before. They spur me to go look up references and quotes and, and books and titles and authors that I haven't heard. There's a lot of, of meat within her books that can kind of spin you off in different directions. So it's a little bit as an author, like she's running her own little book club and she's giving you her little Goodreads reviews of, you know, the works of Ellen Montgomery or something. Um, another, another facet of her books is that her happily ever afters are often um, hard, you know, but she sort of seems to revel in the hardness. Um, in one of them, uh, maybe more than one of them, uh, I know that they take on, you know, the hero's orphaned um, nieces and nephews, for instance. So they're going to raise an instant family, and, and it's going to be hard, and they're going to have to, like, go around and dig sheep out of, like, snowy drifts for the rest of their lives and, and have newly born sheep, you know, tottering around the kitchen and, and sliming everything. And and um, that's described with a, a wonderful, like, joie de vivre that she has about it that may not, in fact, reflect reality. I mean, I like HEAs where we're, like, putting our feet up and <laughs> being weighted on hand and foot. But that's not Essie Summer's jam. She really wants to sort of show that, that, Having a life afterwards doesn't mean that you that you get to a little cloud and rest peacefully together. That instead, a happily ever after is is a man and woman who who like love each other fiercely, but are gonna have to form a strong partnership to get through the storms of life. And I really enjoy that aspect of her work. Um, another um, thing I find interesting, particularly coming from the lens of uh, Betty Neal's is that um, S.C. Summers really acknowledges uh, the physicality of of attraction, and um, it's not it's not sexy times. She was the wife of a minister, and you really feel that. But it's also um, she really acknowledges um, that part of a human being. She's coming at it from a very Christian worldview, which I personally really ap appreciate. Um, I would, I would call it really excellent inspirational literature. And I actually like, I hate that genre generally because it's so ham-fisted and like kind of tends to be preachy and awful, but, um, she does it in a really fantastic way. Um, I'm uplifted often when I, when I read her books and, um, but it still de deals with like people as they are, not, not not, you know, plaster saints. Some of my favorite titles that I'm going to look forward to this year, or two or three, <laughs> we'll see. I have a very busy life right now, um, that I get, that I'll get to review are, um, Season of Forgetfulness, which is kind of wonderful, and, um, there's another one called The Smoke and the Fire, which has one of the best proposal scenes in any book I've ever read, and it's, I think there's name calling in it, and, um, He's not the one doing the proposing, so it's fantastic. Uh, another that I really enjoy is Revolt and Virginia, and um, which talks very frankly and honestly about what it is to be um, the daughter of the manse, um, is, is the term that she often uses. Uh, the child of a minister interested in marrying ministers. Hearing Essie Summers talks about um, the life of ministry is very interesting because she lived it so intimately and it's not all roses and she's happy to talk about that. <laughs> um, but I really love how that book particularly starts off with a fantastic hairstyle. You know, that changes everything. And I think that that's a very real thing for a lot of women. In case you are curious to know what my entire Essie Summers collection looks like, I thought I would show you. I recently got a few um, from one of my, we'll call them Bettys. One of my Bettys um, got me some. So here's a few of the new ones. And then here are, oh, here's my other ones. This is, this is double deep down here. Um, so I probably have, um, I probably have 52 of them. 
and um, I look forward to reviewing all of them this year and, and hope that you enjoy um, following my reviews. Thank you.